serious subject, uh, lethal force, and a couple of definitions. Lethal force or deadly force is the amount of fo force that will cause death or great bodily harm. Great bodily harm um, is a it's a far more complex definition, but it means permanent or protracted disfigurement, uh, loss or impairment of the use of a bodily member, organ, or faculty, uh, things like that. So we need to understand the difference between these two things. So lethal force is something that causes death. Great bodily harm um, is something that causes less than death, but still severe injury. Now, in cases where you are threatened with death or great bodily harm, in the great state of Tennessee and in many other states, you are allowed to protect yourself. And let's talk about three words that will hopefully keep you out of prison, okay? Number one is the bad guy's intent. Is this on camera? Yeah. The bad guy's intent. What is intent? His words or actions that would lead a reasonable person to fear for their safety. You know, somebody, somebody says, I'm going to fucking kill you. It's, you know, things like that. It's pretty simple. Next is ability. Now, of course, everybody thinks about the attacker's weapon. Uh, certainly, if you're armed with a firearm and somebody has a knife or a bat or a brick or another gun or whatever the case may be, that's a no-brainer. You can shoot him. But what if you are a healthy adult male being, uh, being attacked by another unarmed healthy adult male? Pretty much the way the court looks at it is healthy, healthy adult male versus healthy adult male don't get the pistol out. Okay, that's pretty much how. Now this is a great this is a great uh, place uh, to make sure you know some hand to hand skills, pepper spray, you know things like that. So that that's kind of the gap where that that, that fits in. Uh, but let's talk about two unarmed guys or three unarmed guys or four unarmed guys attacking you. This is called a disparity of force. Can four healthy adult males beat to death uh, unarmed males beat to death one healthy adult male? Yes. Certainly. Three, yeah. Two, probably. One, the way the court looks at it, no. There's a disparity of force. Disparity of force also applies to, you know, a 120-pound woman versus a 220-pound man, or maybe a 220-pound man who, whose leg is in the cast or he's wheelchair bound or he's on crutches. He, he, he can't fight. He can't run. And so he will be able to use force sooner than a healthy adult male. This is a, this is a very tangled web of stuff, and I encourage you to find out as much information as you can. But let's talk about the third word. Opportunity. Hope I spell all this right. Opportunity. Does the bad guy have the ability to carry out his threats? Uh, is he there? Is he where he can do this thing that he's saying he's going to do? Um, and so if somebody threatens you over the phone and you go look for them, <laughs> that's not self-defense. So let's think about it like this. A guy says, I'm going to murder you. Okay? Intent. He says, with this axe, okay, ability, he's proven his ability, and he's cutting through your front door, okay, opportunity, intent, ability, and opportunity. Intent um, can, can also, some, some places uh, call it jeopardy, like your, your, life is, your life is actually in jeopardy. But, uh, but what we use is intent, ability, and opportunity. These, are, these three words can keep you out of prison, keep you out of... Uh, um, any other kind of precarious legal situation that you might find yourself in. And these are the three words that good guys use. As I've said before, bad guys use violence and good guys use force. And this is the rule book for the good guys to use force. Okay, so James, uh, we know you uh, as the CEO of Tactical Response. Uh, you know, you have awesome gun training classes. Now, as far as hand-to-hand -hand skills, where would you recommend someone go to learn something that's going to be effective and practical? As far as hand-to-hand -hand stuff, I get asked all the time if we provide that kind of training, and that's not our forte. That's not what we're good at. And we're not one of these schools that just sees the whim of the moment and tries to attract people. That's not what we're the best at. That's not what we do. Um, now, as far as in general, uh, and I know I'm going to make some people mad, but pretty much there, there are very few places that you can get real combative training. Um, like Performance Edge in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky is an MMA gym where they really fight. MMA means mixed martial art. It means basically they blend everything together, all the martial arts, boxing, wrestling, all this stuff together to make people good fighters. The problem is there are a lot of Johnny-come-latelys or called McDojos that say they're MMA places that really aren't MMA places, uh, mixed martial arts. And so um, in general, I would say 
go take MMA classes. It's going to do a couple of things for you. Number one, uh, you're going to be more physically fit. There's probably very few people watching this video that couldn't lose a few pounds, okay? And so you're going to be more physically fit. The more, and the more fit you are, the better fighter you are. So you're going to look better, and you're going to be a better fighter. Number two, psychologically. If some guy squares off with you in the street and says he's going to whip your ass, he's trying to intimidate you. How intimidated are you going to be of a guy that does that when three nights a week you fight black belts for fun? And, and then finally, um, uh, having quality hand-to-hand -hand skills will reduce the amount of times that potentially you need your firearm. Maybe if it was one of those ones that could have went one way or the other. Maybe if it was two guys attacking you and they were unarmed, maybe you could fight those guys, whatever the case may be. Or you might have to fight to get your gun. You might have a guy on top of you pounding you, pounding you down, and you might have to fight him long enough to be, even be able to draw your pistol. So there's several, several reasons why it would be positive for anybody that carries a gun to get martial arts training, mixed martial arts training, real fight training. And if there's nothing like that around your place, wrestling and boxing. If there's a, if there's a place that does boxing, go box. If there's a place that does wrestling, do that too. Uh, those are the two, two big ones, really. Um, and so... Uh, uh, consider you know adding that into your repertoire and the reason that most of you will never do it is because you can't buy something and go take the class like for instance I do firearms classes I have a bunch of people come if I did knife classes I'd have a few people come if I did a hand-to-hand -hand class nobody would come because it's not they can't show their shiny new tools off when they get there it's about you and what you're capable of and people want to do things that, that reinforce their positive self-image and going to get your ass kicked when you first start doesn't reinforce your positive self-image so get your head out of your ass and go get some training